especially my wife's concern, was that she had no brakes almost whatsoever if you applied them with all your strength. And she doesn't have as much strength in her legs as I do. So she was saying there was no brakes. I was saying, well, there's almost no brakes. About a block to get stopped, a city block to get stopped from 30 miles an hour is what it took. So there was like a little bit of like backup hydraulics just to the rear brakes. That's all I had. So essentially, she was right. You had no brakes. So the VSV and ABS lights both were coming on. There was buzzing and, and of course, uh, audible buzzing, beep, beep, beep of alarms. So that's what was going on. Stop, happened out of the blue. Nothing seemed to uh, precipitate the issue. So you pull codes, all codes, all modules. And we had a C1300, a C1310, and a C1313. Well, the 1313 was an ABS relay. The 1310 was a high voltage system malfunction of some kind. And the C1300, ooh, that's an ABS ECU, like Fred's dead type of a code. And the DTCs were cleared and it came right back. So we started looking deeper into it. I, in fact, even called a, a, a colleague I know that works on the Toyota hotline, described these things to him. And he says, you know what? When you have that combination of codes for relays, hybrid system, ECU of some module, usually it's wiring. So I, yeah, that makes sense to me too. So we'll look at all the powers and grounds. I thought I might've hit pay dirt. That ground on the right looked a little suspicious. I cleaned it up, no difference whatsoever. So we did voltage drops on everything power and ground related. I mean, we're taking weekends because I'm a road traveling trainer. So I get home on weekends to try to work on this little Prius, which is my wife's main ride. And you know, needs to say, after a couple of weekends of playing around with this car, because I don't want to replace any expensive components that I don't need to, it's my pocket, okay, that's going to be paying for this stuff. So this has taken a few weekends to get all these voltage drops tests done and so forth, because it's hard to actually get access to the components. I had to power down the high voltage system in order to take the top of the inverter cover off, which was preventing me from getting access to the ABS hydraulic modulator assembly, the thing that looks like the main brain for the ABS, but it's not the main brain. The main brain is that any skid unit or skid control unit, the little module under the dash. So after I come to the conclusion that there wasn't any wiring issues, wasn't any ground issues or anything like that, and I'm looking thoroughly about how all the system works, it's amazing how when you have to fix a car, you become an expert on it. You read up about it and you reverse engineer how it all works and you ask people of any walk of life you can, IATN, you're on the you're Googling the Prius owners group because sometimes people that own these cars, they own Harleys, they own you know, Ford uh, Power Strokes, they know sometimes more about it than a lot of the engineers do. So you're looking at every source of information you can get and I come to the conclusion that we need an ABS skid control unit. That's the big expensive part, which I priced out, was $1,260 wholesale from the Toyota dealership. That was what looked like was gonna fix it, but I wasn't 100% certain who is on a complicated system like this, especially if it's your first one. So there's a picture of the part, and there's the R&R &R to get to it. She got the part, came in two days, we put it in, we had to use the factory tool to do the vehicle stability control resets for the yaw sensor and for this module. So there was some resets and learns that had to be done, but after that was all done, the codes cleared out, and guess what? The Prius was back on the road. My honey had her little Prius back and she was all happy finally after yours truly took about a month of Sundays working on it. But what we learned here at the case study was that very complex system, you have to sometimes reverse engineer theory of operation, schematics, get any pit, tidbits of info you can, anywhere you can, shreds of evidence and so forth, and then just tear into it because we have to fix these cars. And at prices of $1,200 for one stinking module, just as part of the system to get that Prius to stop, we have to make right decisions in making our, our, our repart replacements because it can be easily thousands of dollars just to stop a Prius or a Jaguar with adaptive cruise control.